I was asked to mention again, I made myself a note. See, Bill, I do have to make a note so I won't forget. Uh, Jerry is having to go to the VA again. They're having a doing a biopsy, a liver biopsy, on the 10th of February. That's a Wednesday, I believe, at 8 a.m. And if she has somebody that might could drive, she would appreciate that very much. That's an early, early start, but he needs to be there about 8 a.m. And it will probably be a, a full day almost. At the entry port at the VA Center. So if you can help, talk with Sherry or, I mean, uh, Joy or Jerry about that. When you look at chapter 21 of 1 Corinthians, the Chronicles, it deals with one of the sins of David. Ma'am, he's all right. Come on, have a seat. You don't bother anybody. It deals with one of the sins of David. And we think about David, we think about the sin of what? Adultery. Adultery. We think about David with Bathsheba. Or murder. He wound up having her husband. Um, the front of the battle. I can't think of his name. Uriah. No. Uriah, Uriah, thank you very much. He had Uriah, her husband, sent to the front lines in the battle, so he'd probably get killed. But this is this is really a lot of what we know David for. We know David for the 23rd Psalm, but we, we know a lot about David. But when you think about David, you think about the sin with, with Bathsheba. But God doesn't even record this sin in 1 Chronicles. It's not even mentioned. But David still has a has a situation in 1 Chronicles. If we look at 1 Chronicles, it begins the sin of numbering his warriors. Mm -hmm. Numbering your men. That was a sin. I know in the, the title of the sermon, I put this and I got to thinking, I probably should have, should have listed some verses or chapters or books or something. But I thought about this later. It says, you did what, says the Lord? <laughs> That's kind of East Texas. <laughs> you, you, but if you look hard enough, you can probably find it in there somewhere that would go along with that. You did what, says the Lord? But David's sin was numbering his men. Counting his men. Can you imagine? Look with me in chapter 21. I want to begin with verse, verse 1. Look immediately who the instigator is in all of this. Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a census of Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count the Israelites from Beersheba to Dan. Then report back to me so that I may know how many there are. But Joab replied, May the Lord multiply his troops a hundred times over. My Lord, the king, are they not all the Lord's subjects? Why does my Lord want to do this? Why should he bring guilt on Israel? The king's word, however, overruled Joab. So Joab left, went throughout Israel, and then came back to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of the fighting men to David. In Israel there was 1,100,000 men who could handle the sword, including 470,000 in Judah. This is God's word for God's people. The real problem of this, the real culprit, the one who really started the problem was Satan. When he began to put doubt in David's mind, Joab, you know, said, hey, our, our Lord can, can multiply by thousands and thousands. You see, David was about to go into battle. And he wanted to know if he had enough men to take this, take this battle. And so he numbered them. He had a problem with what God was able to do. He began to look at his enemies and he began to look at himself and think, how are we going to fix this? How are we going to handle this situation? 
You know, when David went out against Goliath, David didn't, David didn't count. David just picked up a slingshot and I think five smooth stones because he wasn't going out in the power of David. He was going out in the power of God. Amen. David wasn't worried about the numbers. David wasn't worried about the end of that battle. He was going in the power of God and he knew God sent him. God said, somebody go and David said, here I am. Now, here's David. Go count my men. Now he's concerned about the battle. Am I going to have enough to take care of all this? So what was the sin? Not trusting God. Yeah. Took his eyes off God. Oh, you, all, you all hit it on the head. All of the above. Yeah, all of the above. And you can put it down to one word. He lacked faith. God had said, here it is. Go get it. <coughs> and now he's counting his men. So he's doubting God. Can we really do this? Do we have the paddle of oh, the paddle? <laughs> I was thinking about my first licking at school. <laughs> do we have the battle in sight? And do we believe God is sending us into battle? Why are we numbering our troops? God said, there it is. Do you ever do that in your own life? You feel God leading you to do something or do this or do that and you wonder, how am I going to do this? Sure. Do you? Yeah. We we look and we begin to number our number our armies, don't we? We begin to number our warriors. How many fighting men we've got? Can we withstand this battle? So we're doing the very same thing David is doing. It's a lack of faith. Do we but do we have that faith in God that God's going to deliver us? That God's going to see us through? We have the same the same problem as David did. Our nation is going through some of that right now. Do we have enough warriors on the ground? Do we have enough ships? Do we have enough aircraft? We're looking at what the United States can do. Do I have the power to do this? We're numbering our troops. We're one nation under God. If we are a people who stands for the right if we are a moral people who are living for God and we're, we're, we're living that life, God is going to bless our nation. Amen. If we're a people who turn back and we begin to look and we begin to wonder, we begin to think about the missiles, the warriors, the ships, sometimes we begin to doubt what God can do. I'm not saying get rid of our army or our navy or our air force. I'm not saying that. But sometimes if God puts us in a position and we see the battle, God's put us there. It's not about numbering your troops. It's about having enough faith to go into the battle. This is where you begin to look at Jim think. What? You begin to look at me in a different way. Maybe. Okay, put my fingers on there. I was sent a note a while back. Thank you for showing us Another way to be involved in our community with blah, 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 blah. Strong, godly leadership is what we need. <coughs> if not always appreciated at the time. I'm going to deliver a message to you that came to me this week after I was going over this in my head. 
And I assure you, this is not from Jim. Because it'd be a whole lot easier just to let it slide. But this was laid on my heart, and I'm about to share it with you. It's about counting your warriors. It's about facing a battle and counting your warriors. Do we have enough for the fight? We met last week, and the discussion was to be the possibilities of what we're doing here. Would that be right? The possibilities of what's going to happen here, what we need to do, what happens. And then what did we turn around and do? There was really no discussion about what we were going to do here, was there? Did you hear any discussion of what we were going to do? Our plans? No plans. Mm -hmm. Nothing was brought out. But we turned right around in a moment and we began to count our warriors. We began to look at our money. Go count the money. Go count the money. Make sure we've got enough. We can do this. That's what we're doing, wasn't it? Yep. I want you to listen and to understand. And this is very hard. tried to lead you into a direction and we didn't get it. And that, that's right. We're trying to go into another direction. And I'm telling you, if we're going in that direction, we don't have to count our money. We start our battle and it'll be there. I'm at the point now, it doesn't matter to me if we go over there. It doesn't matter to me if we stay here. I'm good either way. But I'm going to tell you the truth. What did Jesus say when he really wanted the people to listen to him? I'll tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. The truth is, if you're going to stay here, and that's fine. There needs to be some things done. Not two years from now, not five years from now. That foyer out there is already sunk about four inches. Was I for fixing that? No. But that foyer has sunk about four inches. It's getting to the point where it could be dangerous. There's a long beam, Bob, am I right, going right down this wall, all the way. And that beam is Rotten? Would that be the correct term? You see, it's getting close to where it's going to fall in on you. I'll tell you the truth. If you're going to do it, if you feel that that's the will of the Lord, then don't worry about counting your troops. Just go to work. It's about fixing the stuff. And when we fix the stuff, it'll be taken care of. But there's things that's got to be done if you're going to continue to sit here. There was a group five years, ten years, I don't know, thirty years ago that let it ride. Am I telling you the truth? They let it ride. Maybe not knowingly, but they let it ride. And now here it is. It's in your lap. Now you can be the group that's going to step out and fix it. Or you can be the group that's going to count your army and let it ride. And then somebody down the road, maybe five years from now, will have to fix it. This is not popular. But it's got to be done. And maybe you step into battle little bits at a time.
but you go in and you, you fight. If that's the way the Lord is leading you, then step up for battle. It's going to take some money. We got a little bit. We got a few soldiers. But the problem is, the other day, we needed to talk about this. We started counting our, counting our troops. And we didn't see any way in the world we could tackle it. But what does the scripture say? All things are possible with God. If this is the way you want to go, then go for it. But go for it. Don't sit and wait till Bob and and and, and uh, good grief. That guy. What's your husband's name, Sherry? Charles. <laughs> Don't wait till Bob and Charles and George and, and, and Bill and all them fall up on that side and then you say, hey, we got a problem. Should I move over there? You probably should. <laughs> but people, we've got a problem in our midst and we either fix it or we let it slide until somebody will pick it up and battle it. Are you the group that's going to pick it up and fix it or are you just going to let it slide by and wait till somebody else decides we'll take care of it or it falls in? There's a, there's a real problem. When you look at James, James 4, James is talking about boasting about tomorrow, what we've got, what we ain't got, what we're going to do, what we're not going to do. And in James 4 and about 15 it says, Instead you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or do that. As it is, you boast and brag. All such boasting is evil. Here it goes. Listen to me. I'm about to tell you the truth. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, it's a sin. You've been told. We know what we need to do. Now we just need to get together and do it. You know David was punished severely for that? You know he was punished severely for counting his troops? If you go on down into Chronicles, where I was at in 21. So Gad went to David and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Because you counted your troops, this is what the Lord says. Take your choice. Three years of famine. Three months of being swept away before your enemies with their swords overtaking you. Or three days of the sword of the Lord. Days of plague in the land with the angel of the Lord ravaging every part of Israel. Mm -hmm. Now then decide how you should answer the one who sent me. He sinned, and because he sinned, because he knew it, he said, you got three choices. David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth with a drawn sword in his hand extended over Jerusalem. And then David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell face down. David said to God, Was it not I who ordered the fighting men to be counted? I am the one who has sinned and done wrong. These are but sheep. What have they done? O oh Lord my God, let your hand fall upon me and my family, but do not let this plague remain on your people. You've been told. You've heard it. Now it's about counting your men, counting your, your warriors, or are you going to battle? If the Lord's leading you, what are you going to do? Now we've got a question at the end of the sermon. I don't know if I ever had a question at the end of the sermon. <laughs> I do want to share this up. I can't find them because I'm going to paraphrase something that, that I read yesterday on Facebook. But being the church treasurer, <laughs> I was counting the money. Anyway, this quote I read last night said, when you have a dream, to go for your dream, like the dream that we have for Tenney Chapel, he said, God doesn't look at your bank account. There you go. He looks at your faith. 
Amen. Do you have enough faith to step out and say, this is what we're going to do. We're going to fix that. We're going to go in there and fix that beam. And if the money keeps coming, we're going to do the rest of it. Amen. It will. God always provides. If you go into battle and God sends you into battle, He sends you with the equipment to win that battle. Amen. Satan trying to cut us down. Satan is trying to divide and conquer. And he's doing a pretty good job. But we have to come together in unity as one church, one body of Christ, and saying, let's go. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, this is the most wonderful church we've ever been in. Amen. It is. There's a decision that needs to be made. There's things that need to be done. If they want to continue to worship in this building, this building is old, this building is like maintenance, and now it's caught up. The generation before them didn't do it. The generation today, are you going to do it? Or are you going to let the other guys do it? We're going to do it. David, where's all the money? In our pockets. In your pockets. <laughs> in our pockets. <laughs> we got plenty. The money's in God's hands. We got plenty of warriors. And that's money <laughs> If we do the whole thing, we're talking about $40,000. Okay. Can we do part of it? That's what I'm saying. There's things we've got to do. Let's do that. And then we do the steps as we need to go. Yes. Let's do what we have to do. First. We got a, we got a warrior sitting right here and said, "Hey, don't count me. I'll be there." <laughs> Another one said, "Let's do it." It's about stepping out and doing what God wants to do. And when you step out, and I told you. At the beginning of the service, I don't know how, how I said it, but there's something different about today. You look different. I pointed it out to Angela. Look at the crowd. Look at their faces. They look different. Now, it's about fear. It's about trembling. And the first thing God says to us when he meets us or the angel comes to us, what's the first thing they say? Fear not. Fear not. Why are you afraid? You're a child of the king. Don't be afraid. Are you there? You go. Can I give? Can I just share a testimony with you guys? Please, come on up. I, I was wondering why we were coming this morning. Come on. Uh, come up there. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I talk loud enough. I don't. You don't want to well, there's some of these people real hard here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, my, my wife and I, we have a uh, a church we belong to. It's called New Core. Um, and we were dealing with some of these very same issues. We had a house, a residential program to help men get off drugs and alcohol, and the house was, the roof was caving in. And then the county came and told us that we either needed to upgrade our septic system or get out. We couldn't have the men. And it was real opposition. It was going to wind up costing about 20000 And we didn't have it. Um, very, very small. It was basically just our family. Um, and we didn't have it, but we, we knew that the Lord called us the New Corps, Newsom. And we knew that he was changing the lives of men. Um, so we, through a lot of struggle and a lot of prayer, just decided to do exactly what you guys are doing now. Just step out and do it. And uh, when it all came down to the end, uh, there's a brand new roof on the house and a brand new septic system. And uh, the Lord provided everything, and it wound up only costing somewhere around 1500 bucks. Oh um, he just kept sending one person after another to cut the roof, to, uh, one guy come out and cut the roof off for us, another guy come up and framed it. Donations just come pouring in for <coughs> the septic system that uh, we didn't even know who that, as a matter of fact, when the plumber got through, he come up to us and said, uh, all you owe is 950 bucks, and we were kind of like, what are you talking about? Was, you quoted us 10,000. He said, yeah, well, from the day I quoted you, uh, checks just started pouring in with Nucor in the memo, and all you guys owe is 950 now. So I don't know if that encourages you guys or not, but um, I totally agree. Step out. Don't count. If you want to do something, um, the Lord will provide. So. Amen. 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 Do you think this was an accident? No. God's giving you the assurance to step out. Yes. So what are we going to do? Stand up, and we're going to step out. Okay? We're going to stand up, and we're going to step out. We're going to step out. Come on. We're coming.
coming together as a unit. We're coming together as a body of Christ. If this is God's doing, God's going to do it. We don't, we don't have all of it, but we stand up and we step out and we get ready for battle. Come on, Mommy, you're about to see the miraculous things taking place. It's about stepping out. About stepping out, people. That's all it is. Don't knock somebody down to get up here and get a little God in the Get away, Robbie. <laughs> It's about stepping out. And we start. And we begin. Maybe it's the little things. But then we move from there and we go. Are we all ready for this? We're going to do it? Okay, we're going to tell our trustees to begin getting stuff together. Warm where you at? We're going to tell our trustees to begin getting stuff together. The major stuff that needs to be done, let's do it. If you've got money that can come in for this, send it in. We're going to do it. Piece by piece by piece, if that's what it is. And we're going to do it. Who wants to discuss us today? Somebody step out. God's leading somebody. Dear Heavenly Father, we call upon you to be with us in this endeavor. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. Enable us. And Know that we have the faith in you, God. You can move mountains. You can change lives. You can fix the church. If only we have faith, Lord. And faith and the Holy Spirit, we can do this. In thy precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you Thank you. 